looking at here is the skull for Bio 157. And what you're seeing on the top are these things that kind of look like crafts. Uh, these are actually joints, and these joints are called sutures. So this suture right here that I'm moving across, that is the coronal suture. So just as a coronal cut would move in that direction, so does the coronal suture. Another suture is found here. If I turn a little bit, you can sort of see it maybe a little better. That suture right there is called the sagittal suture. So that is the sagittal suture. We'll move to the side here. You see another suture right here. So this suture right here is called the squamous suture. The squamous suture. And if I turn this around here, you see this suture here. And that suture there is called the lambdoid or lambdoidal suture. So lambdoid or lambdoidal suture. All right, so now let's take a look at the bones and the structures that are found on those bones. So the first bone that we're going to look at here is our forehead bone, and that bone is called the frontal bone. So this bone is called the frontal bone. Now there's a structure on here that we do want you to know, and that's essentially the area here between the eyebrow ridges. And this area right there is called the glabella. So that is the glabella. Now we're seeing these holes that are just above the orbit cavity, so uh, where the eyes usually reside here and here. Uh, these holes are found above those. So any hole is a foramen, uh, and since these are found above the orbits, these are known as the supra, or superior, orbital foramen. Supra orbital foramen. So these holes right here, above the orbits, are the supra orbital foramen. Next is the parietal bone. So here's the frontal bone. It's separated from the parietal bones by the coronal suture. This is one parietal bone here. Here's a second parietal bone there. They are separated from each other by that sagittal suture. So frontal bone, parietal bone, parietal bone here as well. If you look off to the side here, this is frontal bone. We see that suture there again. This is parietal bone here. And what separates the parietal bone from this bone is the squamous suture. And so this bone right here is the temporal bone. So this is the temporal bone. And it actually comes down over here as well. That is the temporal bone. This part right here, you see a little suture right there. And so this part of the temporal bone that comes out to here, that is called the zygomatic process. So that is the zygomatic process on the temporal bone. And that suture separates the temporal bone from this bone, or cheekbone, which is called the zygomatic bone. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Next is the mandibular fossa. And on this picture, it's a little hard to tell here. So here is our mandible, our jawbone. And where our jawbone enters into the skull, so it attaches to the skull right there, and there's a little plastic piece there that's residing in that mandibular fossa. So that right there is the mandibular fossa. Essentially a fossa is an impression or a depression in the skull. Next is the external auditory meatus, and that's that hole right there. I'm gonna zoom in on some of these parts down here on the temporal bone. Temporal bone here, zygomatic process, mandibular fossa, and that is the external auditory meatus. That big hole right there, external auditory meatus. Now you're seeing a couple of structures that are kind of moving down here. If you put my finger here, you can see those. The first one, which is a little pointier, that one right there is called the styloid process. So that guy right there is the styloid process. The one that's next to it, more rounded here, that one right there, 
That is the mastoid process. So styloid process, mastoid process. Now I'm going to turn the skull on its underside here. And so I know this is going to be a little hard, but right there, once again, is a styloid process. Right here is a mastoid process. And you can see there's a hole in between the styloid process there and the mastoid process. So that hole is called the stylomastoid foramen. Remember, a hole is a foramen. Styloid process, mastoid process, hole in between those two is a stylomastoid foramen. Next to this, and it's a fairly large hole right here, as I move the jawbone. So this hole right here, a fairly large one, that is called the jugular frame. That is where our jugular vein enters our skull. So jugular frame, right there. Large jaw right there. Next to it, so jugular frame, and next to it right here, this hole right there, that hole right there is the carotid canal. So that hole right there is the carotid canal. The next bone we're going to look at from the outside is called the sphenoid bone. And so when we look at the side here, we see frontal bone here, parietal bone here, temporal bone here, and this bone right here, as you can see the sutures around it, that is the sphenoid bone. And most of the stuff that we're going to look at on the sphenoid bone is within the skull, and we'll get to that later. We can see some stuff on the bottom dealing with the sphenoid bone. And so I'm going to zoom in once again. The sphenoid bone is also found across here. All this in this area is sphenoid bone. And so these three holes right here are also sphenoid, on the sphenoid. The oval one right here is, coincidentally enough, called the foramen ovale. So that is the foramen ovale. The one next to it here is the foramen uh, spinosum. So this is the foramen spinosum right there. The one that's medial toward the midline here is the foramen lacerum. So foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, foramen lacerum. And just to review, once again, this hole here is a carotid canal. This hole right here, this large one, is a jugular foramen. And this one is a stylo masto foramen. If you look in this direction here, looking inside of the orbits, in the back there is sphenoid bone as well. And you can see there is a hole right there. Move the line in a little bit better. You can see that hole right there in the back of the eye, and that is the optic canal. So that right there is the optic canal. You're also seeing here a couple of essentially large cracks. One is going up, and then one is lower. The one that is a little higher here is called the superior orbital fissure. The one here is the inferior orbital fissure. So optic canal, superior orbital fissure here, inferior orbital fissure there. Let's go to another bone that is found on the back side of our skull. And that's this bone here. This bone right here is the occipital bone. That bone right there is the occipital bone. It also comes down underneath here. And I'm turn this around. So we have occipital bone here. It comes all the way around here. The big hole 
right there, that is the foramen magnum. So that's the foramen magnum, big hole. On either side of that, and if I turn this like so, you can see those a little better right there and right there. But here they are on the down view, right there and right there. Those structures right there are called the occipital condyles. So those are the occipital condyles. So our first vertebrae, the atlas, rests against those occipital condyles. Next is the hypoglossal canal. Now you can look, and I'm going to zoom in here again. The big hole is a foramen magnum. That's an occipital condyle right there. And the hole going through that occipital condyle is called the hypoglossal canal. So that's the hypoglossal canal. And we have another one over here. There's the hypoglossal canal there as well. I'm going to widen this up, and I'm going to turn it around again. Dim the lights just a little bit. What you can see here is it looks like there's a line right there and another one right there. So this line that moves across the occipital bone right here is called the superior, superior nuchal line. So that is the superior nuchal line. The one down here is called the inferior nuchal line. The top one is the superior nuchal line. The bottom one here is the inferior nuchal line. All right. The next bone, and this one's a little harder to see, is right back here. So it's this bone that you see there. You're seeing sutures separating it there. That bone right there is called the ethmoid bone. It's essentially surrounded by a lot of other bones. So over here on this side, you can see ethmoid bone there as well. There's only a couple of structures that we can see from the outside here now with the ethmoid bone. So in both of these we see looking through the nasal cavity here. The first is the perpendicular plate, which is that right there. That structure right there is a the perpendicular plate. And also you can see these bones here that are curling into the top. And those are called middle nasal concha. So this bone here and that bone there are the middle nasal concha. And a little bit more. This is the perpendicular plate right there. This guy here and that guy there are the middle nasal concha. Now let's take a look at the mandible. Okay, I've already removed the mandible. So this is our mandible, our jawbone. Looking at the parts on the mandible, this area in here, right there, this area here is called the ramus of the mandible. Let me zoom in a little bit on this. So this guy, this part right here is called the ramus of the mandible. This portion here, this whole entire portion here, is the body of the mandible. This is the body of the mandible. Go back to the side here. This right here, this rounded area right there, that is called the mandibular condyle. So that right there is the mandibular condyle. Next is the pointed part over here. The pointed part there is called the coronoid process. So that is the coronoid process. This is the mandibular condyle. That is the coronoid process. This down here where our mandible turns is called the mandibular angle. So that is the mandibular angle. And this area right here where do, uh, dips down between the mandibular condyle and the coronary process. This is called the mandibular notch. So that right there is the mandibular notch. Now we have a couple of holes that we can see in our mandibles. 
The ones on the front of our manuals here, these guys are called the mental frames. These holes in the front are called the mental frames. We turn it around, the holes on the inside of the manual here and here are called the mandibular frames. So those are the mandibular frames. The ones on the outside are called the mental frames. Those are the mental frames. The ones on the inside, once again, are called the mandibular frames. Alright, moving back to the skull. So what makes up our upper lips here, this area here and this area here, those are the maxilla bones. Those are the maxilla bones. So go ahead and put the jaw back in the place here. Those are the maxilla bones there. We turn this upside down, and actually I may have to take the jaw off again and zoom in on this. We're going to see a bone that is separated here. There is a suture right there, and this bone right here is called the palatine bone. So that suture there separates the palatine bone from this area here, which is maxilla still. The palatine bone, this is maxilla here. But this area of the maxilla bones is known as the palatine processor. So these are the palatine processes. And what we see here with on the inside, uh, underneath, essentially in the mouth area, on the palatine process, we've seen a slight indention there. These teeth right here are called incisors. And so this hole, this indention right there, is called the incisive fossa, named after those incisors. So the incisive fossa. So this is palatine bone, that separation there makes these the palatine processes of the maxilla bones, and that's the incisive fossa. If we turn back to that front view again, we'll widen this out a little bit, we see maxilla here, maxilla there, and now you're seeing these holes that are below the orbits. So those holes right there and there are the infra, meaning inferior, so infraorbital frames, so infraorbital frames are those two. One bone I've already kind of mentioned here, but I'm going to mention it again, is our cheekbone. So if we look at the front side, so you can see that suture separation, that's maxilla here. Our cheekbone is there, and that is the zygomatic bone. If I turn it like this, you can see zygomatic bone, and it ends right there. So that's zygomatic bone there. That is the zygomatic process of the temporal. Alright. Lastly, on the outside here, we're going to see a few other structures. So on here, you can kind of see this one here. So you're seeing a small little bone there. That bone is called the lacrimal bone. You can see sutures around it. And now you're, you can see this indentation right there. And that indentation is known as the lacrimal fossa. So that is the lacrimal fossa. There are two small bones that are found about, uh, that make up the bridge of our nose. This little bone here and that little bone there. And those are the nasal bones. Those little guys there are the nasal bones. The last bone is this one right here, and this is the vomer. So that bone right there is the vomer. And then these little guys here that curl into the nasal cavity go so up here, the perpendicular plate. These two up here were the middle nasal concha. These two down here are the inferior nasal concha. And that is it for the outside of the skull.